Hey Jordan, what's going on? So, when I was a lad, maybe 11 years old or so, I distinctly recall going to my local record store, which did still exist, though they mostly only sold CDs and tapes at that point, and buying a tape cassette of Nevermind, which blew my mind. So, the paper that you were writing last week probably, you know, it's grounded in fact. I mean, I weep for students of your generation because the number one album in the country has never in your lifetime been anything as revolutionary or edgy as that particular album. And I mean, the effect that that album had still lingers because we're still talking about alternative music uh, 20 years, 22 years later. So it's, uh, it's a good topic. Even if you had to listen to Smells Like Teen Spirit a million times to write your paper. Moving on. Thanks so much for the recommendations. Um, I was aware of Joe Bonamassa, uh, Guthrie Govan I had not listened to previously. And they're great. Uh, they are objectively guitar prodigies. Uh, but that's not always the kind of thing that I find my ear going towards. And I don't really know why that is. I think about bands and artists in my life uh, that I know are objectively great and that people love, but that I don't listen to, that don't resonate with me, and um, these two are not quite there, but they're getting there for me. Uh, when I listen to them, I mean, you can't doubt the technical wizardry and the brilliance of their guitar playing. I mean, if you were to doubt that, you're out of your mind. But at the same time, I don't know, there's something missing for me, and I don't really know what it is. It's got to be in my own, my own aesthetic sense, I suppose, but Whatever it is, it's just not there. Um, and that's on me. Squarely on me. Certainly not on either of these gentlemen or on you. I mean, they're, they're quality recommendations. So I'm actually going to go uh, way, way back and I'm going to recommend uh, Mississippi John Hurt today. There he is. Uh, Mississippi John Hurt was a very, very talented uh, country blues player, I suppose that's how we'd call him. Country blues player at the time when the country blues was really exploding, when we had, you know, Robert Johnson and all of those folks playing uh, kind of an acoustic blues, really giving giving rise to the form that would become the blues, which probably already was well established before these folks started getting recorded. And, and Mississippi John Hurt, he did his uh, initial recordings in the 20s, and then he went right back to his sharecropping farm. And he was actually rediscovered by a music graduate student in the uh, late 50s or early 60s. They tracked him down based on the lyrics in his songs. And they said, are you Mississippi John Hurt? And he said, yes, yes I am. And they sent him on a bit of a tour. And he went around playing mostly for college audiences, which always blows my mind, by the way, that at that point in American music, college audiences were the most receptive to folk and blues music, which is just amazing. I can't imagine a current college where that would go over the same way. And he played his tunes, and they recorded him some more. And so we have a lot of Mississippi John Hurt audio recordings. We don't have very many video recordings, though there are a couple, which is more than we can say for somebody like Woody Guthrie. And they're just beautiful stuff. Um, I heard someone once refer to it as the most beautiful music ever put down on American tape. And I have to say that, you know, I don't necessarily agree, but I can't really find fault with that characterization. It's just beautiful, heartfelt, emotional music, and the guitar styling on it is unbelievable. That finger-picking style... It sounds deceptively simple, but, you know, if you try to fool around with it, you'll find that there's really a lot going on in there. And it's beautiful stuff, so I hope that it resonates with you. It is uh, one of my favorite albums to put on when I'm trying to go to sleep. Um, the Library of Congress recordings are just beautiful stuff. And you just go to sleep, and you're sung to sleep by the, by the dulcet tones of Mississippi John Hurt and his amazing finger-picking on his guitar. So yeah, um, what's going on with me? Not so much. Saw you last week. It was really very nice. Uh, thank you to the Rio's parents for that lovely poster. Uh, we're still trying to figure out where we're going to put it, but I'm sure we'll figure out some place to put it relatively soon. And yeah, you know, uh, Thanksgiving, we had the whole family here. Uh, the week before, I was in Atlanta at the National Association of Biology Teachers Convention, which was cool. I'd never been to Atlanta. 
And I was actually uh, did two different things. I, I ran a session on generating phylogenetic trees uh, using DNA sequence data, and I sat on a panel discussion about uh, being a, a AP biology teacher and, and what that's like. So that was uh, pretty cool. Um, but the coolest thing that I saw while I was at the Atlanta metro area was this. Yeah, so Atlanta has this giant, giant, giant aquarium, and the centerpiece is this 6.3 million gallon tank where they have whale sharks. I don't think I need to tell you how cool that is. So if you're ever in Atlanta, uh, you owe it to yourself to go see the whale sharks. It's like, I think the ticket was like 35 bucks, but they might as well have called it pay $35 to go see whale sharks, because whale sharks. And so, um, of course, when you go to a convention, the best thing to do is meet a lot of people, and I met a lot of people that I know in the digital world, in physical space, and I have to say that it's always nice to see that there are quality biology teachers all over the place doing quality biology things. And so now, uh, home, and then this week I'm going to a super secret location that I'll tell you all about in two weeks, uh, but, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'll be out of the class for three days while I'm at this place doing the thing that I'm doing. It's actually not uh, all that clandestine, but it's just something where they ask us not to tell anybody that we're going until after we go. So yeah, uh, that's it. I guess we've got a couple more weeks until Christmas, which means you've got a couple more weeks until your semester's over. And I hope that things are wrapping up nicely for you. Uh, things around here are going super well, and I'll see you uh, next week. And... John Henry was a steel driving man. Down. You know, you know, I'd really hurt with the first thing I got with John Henry's hand.